Hi. Yep. Uh, my name is Carl, and I am an undergrad at MIT, and I did some work with Billy, which is over there, uh, on enabling transformers to understand low-level programs. So let's get started. Um, right now, there are a lot of advances in the machine learning world. If you don't know about this, uh, there's this tool called Dolly, which takes in some s string of text that you describe what the picture is and generates like a really cool picture. I typed in beaver hiking up a mountain in the style of Monet, and that shows up. So that's pretty cool. And there are some other tools like translators and GitHub Copilot, if you use that. And those uh, breakthroughs in the field of natural language processing is due to this uh, model called transformers. Transformers essentially allows you to take in a lot a larger amount of data and a lot a larger amount of uh, parameters because they can train really fast and it, that results in better outcomes. That's how most of the breakthroughs have come to place in the last two years. And this model has been very successful on natural languages and high-level programs like C, Java, Python, et cetera. Uh, we were thinking about whether we can use these uh, programs uh, in order to facilitate optimization. And optimizations are obviously not on the high level, it's on the low level on, uh, with intermediate representation. So that's why that we need to use uh, transformers on LLVM. However, transformations or like machine learning on a low level code is hard because uh, it's a lot more verbose. Uh, you can see that this simple code of loop invariant code motion is turned into uh, this giant thing that has probably double the size of tokens. Um, but also, the, the good thing about it is that it has a lot more attributes that specific, specifically tells you whether search and automations can be run or not. For example, um, if uh, the mag is not read only, then you cannot uh, run loop and variable code motion on it. And those extra attributes are preciseness that is hidden on the high level, but appears on the low level that we need for applying those transformation. Um, but it also creates a verbosity that uh, we don't want with machine learning uh, models because they don't work well with like repetitive code. And previous approaches um, on applying trans, uh, machine learning to uh, optimization has focused on smaller objectives. We had a talk earlier today about uh, ML Go, which specifically talks about like very specific objectives, like say optimizing inline for size uh, or like register allocation. And there's a lot more work on supervised machine learning than unsupervised in the field of applying machine learning um, to uh, optimization. Uh, that makes sense because Unsupervised machine learning has just get to, to started to apply to code, and most of the applications are on high-level code. For example, there's work on translation between uh, C, Java, Python, but not a lot of uh, applications has been on the low level. Or like, if they are, they are on very specific objectives like super optimization, some uh, x86 uh, assembly code. So our paper. Uh, is to uh, determine the effectiveness of these more generalized whole pro program analysis of end-to-end -end optimization of, or genera uh, generation of low-level programs. And we level, uh, leverage uh, the uh, rather more mature uh, uh, techniques that has been found to be successful on natural languages and high-level programs uh, and use the large amount of unlabeled data um, that is general, uh, generable from like Klein or some other compilers. And then uh, we also build novel low-level specific optimizations for better training. So now I talked a lot about transformers, so let's actually talk about what that is. So the good thing with uh, transformer is that um, you can train on a large corpus of unlabeled data before you go in and, and actually test on, uh, like train on what you want. So because we can get a, a lot more unlabeled data than labeled data, labeling data is very hard and uh, uh, time intensive and expensive, but we can like scrap all of like Wikipedia or scrap all of GitHub 
and then we can ha run it with a pre-trained uh, method, a pre-trained objective, like something called mask language modeling, which essentially gives you a, a sequence of token and you mask out uh, specific uh, tokens from that sequence and ask the model to recover those uh, hidden tokens. And this will give the a model a general understanding of what the language is, and before you go in and fine-tune it on a specific task, such as translate English to French, or translate C to Java, or translate C to LVM, which we'll talk about later. And also, this allows us to uh, have a model that's translingual um, that uh, takes in both like French or English or both high level and low level programs, which provides information that can compensate each other because there are certain really good high level abstraction on the high level that we want, but we also want the specific extra attributes on the low level that is hidden on the high level. And this can better inform us when and how to apply transformer uh, the optimizations uh, considering the context of the whole program. And we have conducted a case study uh, which is translating C to all of MIR. Um, and we start uh, this process by pre-processing, uh, which uh, we have used uh, to tokenizers, uh, C tokenizers from other uh, work uh, that is uh, very mature and successful called Transcoder. And then we build our own uh, LLVM IR tokenizer based on the clan parsers. And we perform this uh, method called byte pair encoding on it, which essentially is to split words into subwords because uh, we want the vocabulary to be smaller that is better for machine learning. Um, essentially, say you have in the natural language sense, you have a word called movement. Um, probably move and mint appear separately um, more frequently than movement together, so you split them up into two words. That's how you do a byte pair encoding. And then we use the uh, method of transfer learning I just talked about, which you first pre-train on a lot, a lot of uh, unlabeled data, uh, which is all the uh, C and LLVM data sets we can get our hands on, and then fine tune it with translation on this functions only, because the functions there are some kind of one-to-one -one, uh, matches. Uh, there's a lot of uh, things that are outside the uh, functions that don't match between C and LLVM. So um, that's how you uh, pre-train and fine tune the model. And we have also done some pre-processing modifications because, as I said, uh, LLVM is verbose and repetitive, and it's hard for the machine learning to, uh, model to understand. So we simplified the language uh, a little bit by first uh, running clan E, as well as uh, reducing the redundancy in the grammar set are uh, like predictable and we can recover, for example, uh, for every load and a lot of other uh, uh, operations that you have a uh, data type and then a pointer to the data value, we just remove the pointer to it. And we also change our notations uh, from prefix notations into, uh, from infix notation to prefix notation. And this has been shown to be very successful on having uh, transformers do math. Um, and we have shown a similar success with uh, changing our data representations from uh, infix notation to prefix notation. Uh, so here it has a keyword that shows like what the uh, data structure is and then it's the length of the data structure and then uh, it can uh, reconstruct the uh, original from uh, our uh, modified prefix notation. And also we write out the definition of global variables so they can be recoverable on the function level, otherwise they're lost forever if we don't fine tune it on on the whole pro programming level, which uh, makes the program more complex, but it makes them compilable, which is a trade-off that I'll talk about later. We have run this model on several different data sets. So we started off uh, with CSMIS, which is a random uh, C program generator, initially to find LLVM bugs. And uh, we have shown not a lot of success on the uh, particular data set, because even though we can get a, a lot, a lot of data, uh, it is not uh, generalizable to the LLVM language uh, as well as like humanly written C code. So we passed on that. And then we moved on to a project CodeNet, which is a web scrape of uh, competitive uh, programming language, uh, competitive programming judging websites. Uh, the problem with this is that there's inherent biases in the uh, data set itself because there are like a few hundred thousand questions and then a few thousand to a million answers to them. Uh, the problem is that all the answers to those questions are somewhat similar and re even repetitive, uh, and so that doesn't generalize well to uh, the language itself as well. 
And then we landed on um, nhubinch, uh, which is a million selected and cleaned uh, compilable GitHub C programs. So um, there are a lot of C programs out there, but uh, we don't. A lot of them can be compiled just like from wh where it is, and there's no like ways for us to know like which can be compiled and which can't be. Uh, but fortunately, there's a group of researchers uh, that have collected this benchmark uh, specifically to facilitate machine learning on compiler languages. And this is uh, a very handy tool and data set we uh, used and eventually found a lot of success on. So we um, evaluate our model on a few different metrics. Uh, one of this uh, is a reference match, which is essentially uh, the percentage of verbatim matches between our predictions of the model versus the ground truth inside the uh, uh, data uh, test data set that we have. And blue score is this other like gold metrics uh, in the field of uh, natural language processing that is essentially uh, takes in two string of text and evaluate how different they are. And then we take an average on all the uh, blue scores we collect from our uh, test data set. We also conducted ablation studies, uh, which talks about uh, our uh, cleaned, uh, uh, cleaning efforts of the LLM language. And it has shown to be very successful. It's better than the original. Um, but uh, some of the uh, cleaning uh, would lead to the programs not being compilable after uh, the, uh, we, we have only shrunk it to the function level and we don't know what the lost information are and cannot recover the lost information. Uh, but however, if we uh, try to uh, recover uh, the, the uh, say global variables and other lost information, we can compile them, but it shows to be uh, a little bit less uh, successful in training uh, than the, uh, just cleaning the uh, functions up. And also, we have performed this both on the O1, uh, O1 level and the O0 level, so both unoptimized and optimized LLVM. And it's shown pretty good success with both. And one thing I want to highlight here is that uh, in the prefix column, there's uh, almost half of the verbatim matches with our test cases. Um, obviously, this is not for you to like forego all the compiler infrastructure right now and go use a uh, machine learning uh, model, but this is a pretty good uh, result in general. And in summary, we uh, evaluate how effective machine learning can be uh, when analyzing or optimizing low-level programs um, that is uh, inherently more verbose and precise than the high-level programs that have shown a lot of success on. And we have uh, presented a case study which is translating C to unoptimized and optimized LVMIR. And, and this has shown to be pretty successful, uh, giving very high verbatim matches as well as blue score. And uh, we also shown that our pre-processing transformations of simplifying the LVM IR language has improved our machine learning performance. But there is a trade-off between the ability to be compiled versus accuracy. And most importantly, uh, this opens up like new possibilities for using transformation uh, transformers uh, for a whole program optimizations uh, because that's something that not a lot of people have uh, dabbled in uh, prior to this point. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you. Questions, please. Yeah, so you were talking about how um, you split up a word or a token like movement into two chunks. I was wondering, since programs are already set up to be easily tokenizable, how much um, benefit you get from that in this situation? Right, so um, that is something that uh, actually I would want to explore more on. And so I just followed like a, a successful precedence of having uh, this uh, implementations in the high-level uh, work that I referenced. So they had this in with the high-level things. Um, I, I imagine that with high-level uh, languages, because there's a lot more like variables, mm -hmm. et cetera, there's a lot more natural language uh, elements to the language than low-level languages. So that that might make more sense. But say like at like x86, that there is like actually just a fixed vocabulary. There's not even like uh, variable names, then we might not even need uh, to buy pair encoding in order to like facilitate to reduce the amount of vocabulary because the vocabulary is uh, 
already pretty small. So yeah, like that's something that I want to explore more on. Uh, we just haven't had to do that. Yeah. Great. That makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, sorry. So um, what's like if if uh, I might have missed this, but what do you think would be you know the 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 most immediate use case for something like this? Like what would I what would I use this for? What would I do with it? Let's assume we get the accuracy higher. Let's assume we kind of solve problems by training it on bigger data sets and you know putting more resources in it or whatever. What what do I do after? Um, right. This is uh, a really good question. Uh, I think. This first opens up the possibility of using transformers. We show that transformers can have really high accuracy on understanding low-level programs. And then we train a, uh, a more specific uh, model in order to uh, perform certain uh, optimizations um, with high accuracy. Um, we, we would like to explore more on, say, like transforming between like uh, having a, a machine learning model to transform uh, un, uh, unoptimized LLVM, like O0 uh, LLVM to O1 or O3, and see if that, that will work, and apply some of these techniques to, to that. Um, yeah. All right. Sure. Thank you. <laughs>